Professional success looks different for everyone. Throughout our lives, we often entertain the idea of different careers in different fields. The child who grows up dreaming of being a firefighter sometimes ends up being a chef instead, and there's nothing wrong with that. As we grow and develop, we often drift towards a specific career path. One that we're passionate about, if we're lucky. And that can be pretty thrilling. Finding success in your chosen field, especially if it's competitive, can feel like a dream come true. But too often, we forget that even the best moments of our lives can quickly turn into a nightmare in the wrong circumstances. My name is Bran, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Suzanne Eaton, a 59-year-old scientist and leader in the field of molecular biology who disappeared from a 2019 conference and was found murdered over a year later. By 1988, Suzanne Eaton was already venturing into her second scientific field, And to say that was an accomplishment is an understatement. Because even decades later, the statistics surrounding women in STEM are pretty disheartening. A 2017 study of students in the UK found that only 35% of students in STEM were women. A similar study in 2019 found that only 26% of graduates in STEM subjects were women. When we see data like this, and we consider that these numbers are still low right now, you can imagine the power, hard work, and brilliance that went into building Suzanne's career when she did it. Growing up, Suzanne was pretty much everything that I wanted to be. This talented scientist completed a BS in biology at Brown and went on to earn her PhD in microbiology at UCLA. When I was reading about Suzanne's academic background and her research, I kind of went into a bit of a nerdy overload. See, my first two and a half years of college were spent studying microbiology. I was the girl taking selfies with stuffed Toxoblasma gondii parasites who was weirdly obsessed with the psychological impacts of parasites, bacteria, and viruses. At 18, I was convinced that parasites were in my future. But studying microbiology at the age of 20 was also very weird for me because basically every person in my program wanted to make beer. (laughs) Now, like a lot of us, I love a good beer, but nothing prepared me for entering a program where all of my classmates were trying to figure out how to make the perfect pilsner. That was why they were studying microbiology. (laughs) But hey, a few years before a global pandemic broke out, I traded that path for a BS in psychology instead, so I could spend the rest of my life awkwardly explaining that, while I have nothing but respect for psychologists, I really just care about how different drugs, substances, and diseases can rewire the brain and... I could never cut it as a therapist because the emotional weight would destroy me. In the world of psychology, I am, at best, the person in a lab coat who pokes things with a stick to see what happens. Suzanne Eaton, on the other hand, was a pioneer, and she worked nonstop to improve her field. She received distinguished achievements and awards for the work that she conducted, and she dabbled in a lot of different spaces. And as if all that wasn't amazing enough, she also had a black belt in Taekwondo, was a talented chef and musician, and she was a dedicated runner. A later statement from her sister said that Suzanne was the truest example of Jane Austen's definition of an accomplished woman, and It made me laugh so hard because it's so true. For those of you who aren't total Pride and Prejudice nerds, there's a scene where Mr. Darcy, who is quite the elitist, details out what it means to be an accomplished woman, and his list is 
about a million miles long. So Elizabeth, his future wife who doesn't know it yet, spoilers, mocks him for this. And it's a really fun scene, but that's fiction. Suzanne Eaton was a real woman who truly was this accomplished, and two of her distinguishing traits ultimately ended in her demise. Yes, in case you forgot because of my STEM fangirling, we are here to talk about the fact that this incredible woman disappeared and was later found murdered. Now let's talk about the case. On the day that she disappeared, Suzanne Eaton was at a conference. She was not just attending this conference. In fact, a couple of days after her disappearance, she was scheduled to lead a lecture on some of her recent research about how certain molecules could influence embryonic development in fruit flies. Again, so cool. (laughs) But Suzanne inspired everyone around her. And... Her already established career was still growing by the day. When she went missing, it wasn't just her family or friends that felt it. It was the colleagues and students and everyone in her field who lost an inspiring scientist and mentor. Suzanne was the kind of woman who listed Spock as a role model because of his unique ability to empathize without necessarily feeling directly for the person. She believed that he demonstrated how anyone can use a rational approach to understand what they have never experienced and what it might mean to someone else. With a wealth of knowledge and so many amazing abilities, It was hard for anyone to imagine the kind of person who would want to hurt her. But as we know, someone did. After entertaining guests in the lobby of the hotel by playing some piano, again, Jane Austen's accomplished woman, Suzanne decided to go for a run. At least, that's what police assumed, because when she disappeared, the only missing item was a pair of running shoes. She didn't take her wallet. She didn't take her phone. Police assumed that she just decided to go out for a quick jog, and her killer story would ultimately support this. Now, a few years ago, there was a day-long Twitter explosion of women runners sharing their disturbing stories about men following them, abductions, and assaults. It isn't a secret that running alone as a woman is dangerous, which is why so many women take so many precautions. Some women carry whistles. Others carry pepper spray. Some share their location with a friend or relative so someone knows where they are. There are so many different things that women do just to be able to run safely. Not running at the same time every day. Not following the same route more than once or twice in a week. These are all active steps that women runners take when they're heading out just to ensure that their quest for health and personal achievement doesn't turn into being kidnapped or followed home. Suzanne never came back, and for well over a year, she was a missing person. Then they found her. Two locals on the Greek island of Crete, where Suzanne was on the day of the conference, walked into a cave. This was not just any cave. In fact, This was a cave that had actually been turned into a Nazi bunker during World War II. When she was discovered, the police were called and the investigation into her death began. In the cave, she was tucked beneath a wooden pallet. At first, police assumed that she must have been looking for shade or had fallen or succumbed to the heat or something. Someone wanted to believe that she ended up under the wood pallet in an accidental way. 
but the autopsy would raise new suspicions. The results revealed that Suzanne Eaton died from asphyxiation, and it didn't seem like her death was accidental. The police investigation began, and before long, police were questioning some potential suspects. One of those suspects was a man named Giannis Periskakis, who broke down while he was in police custody. This man, who was only 27 at the time, admitted to killing Suzanne. According to this murderer, he repeatedly hit her with his car while she was near the road. After rendering her unconscious, he made the decision to abduct her. This man took Suzanne to the cave slash bunker by loading her into his trunk. When he took her into the bunker, he assaulted her. From what I read, he seemed to imply that she was alive when he left, but he remembered grabbing her by the neck. And the details surrounding it kind of seem like he didn't expect her to make it out alive. As we know, she did not survive this violent assault. When he told police about the encounter, he explicitly stated that he was just looking for someone to have sex with and saw her running on the side of the road. What makes this even more disturbing is the fact that this man, who was also a married father of two, had been in trouble for this before. Suzanne wasn't the first woman that this guy hit with her car, but we can all hope that she will be the last because unlike the first time, police did something about it this time. Suzanne's killer was put in prison and will be there for a very long time. But ultimately, that was the best they could do. True crime is a difficult point of discussion, and there's no real guarantee regarding how it will be covered. A lot of the time, the emphasis is focused almost entirely on the killer. But in this case, Every search led me to a celebration of Suzanne Eaton and her many accomplishments. This woman chased her passions and spent her life inspiring the people around her. She was a scientist, a mentor, and a beloved member of her community. She also serves as a standing reminder that the world is a dangerous place even for a brilliant and accomplished woman. If Suzanne wasn't his first victim, why wasn't her killer already behind bars? If the world is safe, why can't women go running alone without fear of being stalked, abducted, or intentionally run over by a car? People looked at Suzanne and saw a brilliant award-winning scientist and a strange man looked at her and saw someone that he could have sex with. That's a problem. All I can say is that we have a lot of work to do. Because if a woman this special isn't safe, none of us are. To honor Suzanne's legacy, several memorial funds have been made to support young scientists who aim to explore multiple disciplines. I linked to the one that had the clearest donation instructions in the show notes if you're interested, so go check it out and help a young scientist grow their career. While Suzanne Eaton might have been taken too soon, her legacy will continue to grow the scientific community, and I have to imagine that that's what she would have wanted. For anyone looking to talk more about science, true crime, or powerful women in STEM, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram using the tag at datpod. 
Normally, this is where I tell you to head over to my Patreon, but today I've actually got a different request. A member of one of my online communities is a talent artist named Sam, who just had his very expensive drawing tablet go out, and replacing it is not going to be an easy feat. So, if you were looking to commission some art or fun graphic design pieces, head over to buymeacoffee.com slash gunmetaldraws. He did a custom piece for me of my Dungeons & Dragons character, Lith, and I loved it. So, if you want some art or you just want to donate to help support a creative professional, head on over. Right now, he's even offering a discount for monthly supporters. As always, stay safe, and I will be back to bug you guys in a couple more days with something new. Bye. Bye.